I'm here, yeah, Martian's. We're recording live, just so you know. Um, and okay. Martian is, uh, I don't know, call failed. Okay, let me try again. I'll call you back. Actually, okay. actually, yeah, I can just press a button. <clears throat> Hi, Gabby and Aaron. Hello, hello. All right, we're live, too. Oh, excellent. I was just, so uh, Tim came here. We just planted the 200 pieces of sweet potato. Excellent. And worked it. Yep, that's good. We ran out of water. Our little well ran dry. So oh, there we go. So we're going to get, uh, we're, we're calling up a professional well digger to basically get a well, because we're not going to make it without it. It's like we're going to run out of work. So we were doing this rainwater catchment, like this 6,000-gallon cistern, but mm -hmm. that's actually not probably not going to be enough for us if there's like 20 people. So we're going to go through that in a second. So, okay. But anyway, so I wanted to, to check in on, let's come up with a food plant. Right. I was actually looking up some different crops. Um, have you guys planted three sisters on the property at all? Yeah, we did, but separately. Yeah, not together. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Separately. Uh, let's. Yeah, se I mean, yeah, corn, squash, and beans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they work. They work very well. Corn is excellent. When's the last we can plant corn? Well, we planted it here about two weeks ago, and that was pushing it. Um, oh, it's pushing it. You think we can, June 15th, could, we can make it or no? I think he could make it. Um, maybe if you planted transplants, June 15th. Transplants? No. That's, do we have that? No, I can't do it right now. It's, uh, how do we do that? Um, June 15th, let's see, 90 days? Right. So June 15, July, August, September 15. That's that's enough. <laughs> we get, really got till October 15 for the first day. Okay. I think um, I think you can plan plan that all the way to like first of July. I think. Great. I mean, if it's 90 days, then that works. Yeah, it'll fit. Also, um, I was thinking celery. Celery, I've never seen grown successfully. Oh really? Uh, how do we find out? Okay, so like a meta level would be who are the resources? Are you familiar with the Kansas City Food Circle? No, I'm not. Okay, so here's what I would would tell you to do. Look up the Kansas City Food Circle uh -huh. and start getting familiar with adapted species, watershed, food shed concept. Like map out the bioregion. So if you're, I'm thinking if you're sticking around, then we mm -hmm. should happen out the bioregion, including the people who are in the closest area that we can learn from and the share right. stock. Can you start looking at that? Yeah, certainly. So from that, um, let's see, let's check in like, uh, let's see, what can we, let's check in on like the six again, but maybe, so now what I would like to do in this hour, just go, get, go down to like absolutes, like what are absolutes? Let's start with the things that are the most certain mm -hmm. and work. can we work in a way that, okay. Gabby, yeah, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Did Martian fade out? Yeah. <clears throat> you? There we go. Can you hear me now? There. Okay, there we go. Okay. Can you? Yeah. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff that's speculative, but there's stuff that absolutely works. So let's come up with that list mm -hmm. and work it as in, okay, these things grow. Now we're going to need this and that and that and that else to come to a complete diet. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at it. What can we plant right now? How does that contribute to a full diet eventually? And would it be even, or can we even make a more radical claim? How could we bring in some animals and actually make it make do with animals like towards really like pretty much a full diet? Is right. that possible? That's possible. Um, so far on my list, I've got melons, um, squash. I'm not 
sure if cucumbers grow well there, but I'll check. Um, and then you have the tomatoes, peppers that you're already growing. Yeah, and then the fruit the, from the, the trees. Like, the chickens dug up that they somehow got in there. We got like two peppers and six tomatoes. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, that was a little area anyway, but it got just the, like two peppers got ripped out. We only had four peppers in there. Oh. So it wasn't. It wasn't big. It was, I mean, I'm talking. This is a mini, 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 mini little plot, like uh, six by, like eight by four. Really, that's it. Just a little, eight by four. Uh, I have other so, vegetables like okra and. Um, okra. Would be, do we have enough time? I think so. Yeah. You. Let me see. What's the time? I mean beans definitely, right? Beans for sure. Beans are so beans important. For sure, we could we could go nuts on beans. Yeah, yeah. Any any kind of beans, green beans, lima beans. Uh, beans. Uh, have you seen them grow? I haven't. I mean, I. In Missouri. If you yeah. Um. See, because I just never seen anybody do lima beans here. They're picky. Like I tried in Wisconsin. They didn't yeah. grow well at all. What were the problems? Do you know? Uh, probably weeds, but 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 altogether they didn't seem to to be so robust. They, uh, I think it was a lot of weeds. Mm -hmm. Well, I know they grow well in that climate. Um, in the specific area that you're in, I can I can look up if beans are grown in that okay. area, sorry, and what kind works well. Yeah. And then also another thing I was thinking about for the like, animals, if I'm going to be coming in. Yeah. And you want to have milk um, in a reasonable amount of time. I was thinking there are sheep species that breed full year round, like whenever they can, they can just breed. So that way we could kind of cheat the seasons if you wanted to, to have milk a little bit early. Okay. Tell me your ideas about cow, goat, goat, sheep. Right. For cows, um, they're just really big. They eat a lot more than sheep and goats. Um, they're also okay. fencing. fencing on goats. Fencing on goats. That's a big deal. Oh, fencing on goats. Yeah. Unless you have maybe one on a tether, you'll need a lot of fencing, and they get out a lot and make a lot of mischief. Uh, sheep, you don't need as much fencing. You can use hot wire that's temporary and movable. Um, goats, you can't do that at all. You have to have permanent enclosures unless you have them tied to something to make sure they don't go around uh a really i mean, for the goats, I mean hold on for the yeah. goat the yield issue is another one right i mean they only do so much right i right. mean it's like a cow gets you what four times as much in a day so or like three times in a day mm -hmm. so like, probably for medicine purposes right if you i mean could you see yourself feeding 20 people with milk not from only so many goats and sheep. If you had maybe one small cow, um, she could just supply everybody with milk. Um, it might be nice just to have one, and you can get kind of a small breed, so it doesn't really um, do a whole lot of damage to the soil. Okay, so with that, can we come up with a reasonable plan for that? So, we, yeah, but we don't have, we don't even have stock ponds, so it's like. We don't, have, we don't have any water for them, so they're going to die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, well. So, so our cow's feasible at all at this point. Only if we have a well, right? Right. So if the well doesn't come up. So I, I actually started calling up, called up a person tonight about a well, the, the local well digger. Mm -hmm. uh, but really without that, we're, we can't do it. Right. Unless, um, I mean, the pond is the deal to go, but we're kind of being like, let's dig it with our own bulldozer, unless we like want to rent a bulldozer. Mm -hmm. But then again, the pond wouldn't be ready for a few months anyway, like okay. uh, till it fills up. So the only hope would be, only practical hope is is a pond. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Okay. Um. So let's. Let's. I have some ideas. But, Sorry, you go. Go ahead, go ahead. I was, I was having some ideas about the trench lines and ways we can make water flow, but I guess that 
I mean, does it rain a whole, all the way through the summer? Uh, are you on a computer? Yeah. Look up, um, like weather, something like climate or rainfall or weather. There's a chart for, for Kansas City. Can you pull it up? Something like average temperature or like temperature something. It's on the wiki. Yeah, I'm finding it. It's, yeah, so you have thunderstorms forecast for Friday. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, um, accompanied by 90 degrees. And yeah. Yeah. So there's always a chance of some participation in the summer. Yeah. Um, but really, like in August, like you can have a month without rain, like one uh -huh. month. Fall. Like right now, we haven't seen rain for like three weeks now, I think. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it's a uh, it's a definite big question. So we gotta not put the cow on a definite, but but other than that, like, are you you're you know how to handle a cow, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know I do. That. Yeah, and, I've worked at dairies. I've worked with. Uh -huh. Cows for beef. Um, I worked with a lot of different animals, but all all livestock, sheep, goats, and cows. Those are the ones I'm most familiar with. Can you get milk out of sheep? Like yeah, you can. That's, like how much? Um, maybe a liter per day. Per day. Mhm. Mm that's without sharing with the young. Um, that's actually with. That was what I was trying to do. I was only doing it to feed babies like orphans with the milk from um a few different ewes that just had extra yeah they would have single or or just have a lot of milk and i would take the extra but i was getting a pretty good amount to feed the rest of the babies from just the few that were doing really well it depends on the breed also you can have a dairy sheep which is really good at making sheep but might not have the best um lambs for meat uh, but you can also get dual purpose breeds that have yeah. Qualities. Can you get sheep's milk in the store? No, actually. I've never seen it. Only um, cheese. A lot of cheese is made uh -huh. with sheep's milk, but it's made in other does, countries, it, I suppose. does anyone do sheep milk, like, commercially? Like, so if they have sheep, sheep goat, oh, sorry. <laughs> I've never seen a sheep dairy <laughs> sell just the milk to people. I've only seen sheep dairy sell milk to cheese makers. Um, uh, is, the, is sheep milk weird tasting or how does it taste? I've actually only tried it. It just, it tastes a little bit like goat milk, but more sheep flavored. If you know what that kind of smell is or like the taste, you can't really describe it very well if you haven't tried it. Do you call, do you call um, so for goats, milk, do you call it goaty? Or no? Goaty. In yeah. the industry, they call it taint, which is an awful word for it. So I say goaty instead of taint, because taint is the the pheromone flavoring from the rams that gets imparted into the milk, and that's why rams smell the way they do. Okay. But, that's um, just, yeah. Um, I would call it sheep, Tell me about this. Would sheep smoke be practical here? Or, I mean, no. I mean, it sounds like I mean, minor quantities. It's like too much work to actually get realistic food supply right for 20 people i don't think sheep are realistic unless you had a lot of sheep but you don't really have the amount of space for a hundred animals or and you don't have the labor to take care of those sheep and milk them every day either so i think like a few really good goats maybe um a cow maybe okay you keep going to goats but what about the i mean with the fencing issues and all of that i mean do we make it practical I was actually going to say a really experimental way to tether goats is to put a zip line with a lead so the goats can walk in one line across the property and just graze whatever is on that line so you can move them around without having fencing. And if you're milking them every day, they should be really socialized to humans and pretty friendly, so it could be pretty right. easy to do that. But you're always going to, like, you're going to get a goat death from a tether, right? Mm. Don't you think? I mean, I'll, if they're climbing, yeah. 
I mean, after enough time, it's going to happen, right? Yeah. We don't want to do that, do we? I mean, I tried it. I, there was cases where they almost died, so I'd rather not do it. I mean, it wasn't, wasn't, a, wasn't on the zip line, but... But it was on each other, and it almost jingled. Yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll go into all kinds of... They, they can get tangled up no matter what you do to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, okay, so how would you do the cutout between cows, like, so cows, that's a big deal. I mean, so we still need electric fencing, so what we need for cows, we need a, an electric power source, we can, that's, that's fine, we can run that. Um, if we get two, like, say two small, two small uh, cows, mm-hmm. or one cow, uh, what are the costs, what kind of costs are involved? Well, mainly it's the cost of feed. Um, if you have enough grass, it won't be an issue because you'll be growing all the feed. Um, but, but I've seen you guys grow hay before. Do you guys still do that? We can cut some hay, yeah. We can bale. We can bale some, will, yeah. It'll be nice when it's not springtime and totally green. Um, especially in the winter. You're going to have to feed them through the winter. Um, okay, but what about the cost of a, of a cow? The cost of a cow, it depends on the cow. If you want something that's kind of a reject from the industrial system, you can get something really cheap. But if you want a heritage breed uh, that needs to be shipped to you from far away or something like that, it can get more expensive. Um, I've never actually bought a cow, so I've never, I've never seen the prices on cows. I've seen um, kind of like heifer calves that are just extra like anywhere from a hundred to two hundred dollars um, but I think you should invest in something that's going to give you enough milk to feed everyone and be healthy so you don't have to spend a whole lot of time taking care of it through sickness do you want to do also uh, in terms of rare breed preservation yeah there's a lot of rare breeds out there that definitely need um, just preserving. Be in preserving and they're often very attractive breeds. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, ones that don't get sick and they might not give you as much milk, but they don't get sick. Yeah. So, uh, um, Highlander cattle are one of my preferred breeds. Um, which, which ones? Highlander. They I come know. in a dwarf variety also, which is just smaller and it might be more, um, yeah. more easy for for us to host cows, if if you want to, I would say go for the dwarf variety. Um, but they make a good amount of milk, and they're really healthy. They're hardy. Do you want to plan on that, or do you want to? Would you want to? I mean, okay. So first is the water issue, but right. after that, do we want to plan on it like pretty seriously, and then talk about fencing? Like, can you draw up a complete list of needs, including yeah. fencing and all of that? Yeah. You do like so. Basically, can you take? Let's assume. Let's start with. Let's see, how do they do, usually do it? Do they artificially inseminate them? Like if you get two, two nice females. Yeah, artificial insemination. And it's usually done by a vet because only certain people know, or, or a breeder, you could call a professional breeder that'll just come out and do it for you. Um, a lot of dairies have people just on site that are trained and they just, that's their whole job is AI. But you can well, definitely get someone to come out. Have you done it? Have no, I haven't. Well, I, I was trained to do it, but I didn't take the the course Final exam. to get certified. Um, it was mostly just this is how you do it. They showed us. We um, we tried it a few times, and that was it. It wasn't an actual artificial insemination. We didn't see if we got anybody pregnant. We were well, just using farmers. Uh, the farmers all do it here. Oh really? Oh yeah, sure. Great. I'll do it. Do that. Okay, um, so let's plant. So what? What's the acreage? A lot, acre, acreage like like enclosed area. What two acres? Four acres? Like the true one acre cow. cow? For a true one acre acre cow, is, does that exist? Well, you have the AUM measurement, which is how many animals animal units you can have on a property. It's one cow, which weighs a thousand pounds. Um, that's just an average per 
I think the AUMs are usually per day or per month of feed that it'll need, that, that acreage. Um, I haven't seen your land or how much grass it has, but is it really lush right now in springtime? Is it really green and there's a lot of yeah. grass? Or? Yeah, it's, it's pretty decent, but it's in a sad shape because it hasn't been grazed. Like, no animals have really, in, very few animals have interacted with it, so it's pretty, it's basically after the decades of commercial agriculture, so it hasn't restored yet. Right. So it's not as, it's definitely not super lush. It's, I mean, it's, towards the end of the year, it gets like, you know, as tall as you, but um, it's not, I wouldn't say it's got the, it's got probably like 75 or 50 percent of its growth capacity mm -hmm. uh, right now. I don't know. Uh, that's a rough figure. Yeah. But like right now, it's, uh, it's like knee high. Mm -hmm. Not, I mean, it, sh it should be prairie. I mean, it should be taller, like twice as tall as you, right? Right. Like at this time, probably, if it were natural. So, um, I think like three acres would be good. So plan on fencing for of three acres for two, two yeah. animals. Do you want to invest in any goats at all? Definitely. Um, okay. They're easily but great. They, and they're really productive. And they, they eat the browse, which is awesome. They eat all of the thorny stuff that cows won't touch. Um, uh, together? Can we put them yeah. together? Yeah. Okay, but then we're going to have serious fencing then. Right. It'll have to be really tall and with no holes. And if we're putting it in new, that's that's fine. It's going to be really great. The the worst part of fencing is when it gets old for goats because they'll just find all of the holes and then they'll learn how to get out and then you can't keep them inside of anywhere until you replace all the holes or just put in a whole new fence. Um, so, does that make sense? I mean, that's going to add up to quite a bit of money, right? Right. The fencing is expensive. You can find it recycled a lot of places, though. Um, what style fencing do we want to do? Do you have any predators? There's, there's coyotes. Um, there's a three. It's like a. But they're three. not fucking for goats outside of babies. Sorry. It's fine for goats outside of babies. Mhm. Mm there's a fencing um, that I like. It's, I think, three inches by an inch and a half or one inch. Um, but it's coyote proof as long as you maintain it. Um, it keeps goats in, it keeps sheep in, and their babies. Um, it's pretty pricey. But I'll check on Craigslist and see if you can get like a bunch used or see like what the basic price is for a used fence. Yeah, we're going to need a budget. I mean, it's like, if we're going to do that, it's like, see, because then the real consideration would be like, if you got three acres or so of cow, then, uh, I mean, that you can do, what would be the preferred choice? Can we just do the mobile, mobile paddocks with, right. I mean, just electrical? Maybe just starting with cows and then see how the cow thing works. And if we have money and the, the need for more dairy in, in the diet, then we can add the goats in afterwards since we won't have, I mean, a surplus of space for them at first. We can just do the temporary paddocks. Um, maybe yeah. think of the goats after we've done some cheese, after we've had the cows for maybe a month or two. Okay. And if we get the cows, what state, like babies? Or adults. I mean, we're talking about waiting a long time, right? For right. Um, how 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 old are they before they can be impregnated? They're, they're a year. Um, you impregnate a cow ideally on its birthdays, um, and it can have a calf every year. Cows are more expensive when you buy them pregnant because you're buying the calf as well um, and the milk after she calves. But yeah. Um, how many years can, like, from a baby cow till she has babies? Is it like two years, three years? I've seen it conventionally done where they breed it at like a year and six months. Um, I would breed a cow two years old. Um, two years old. Just so she can grow. 
enough. No more for two years. Oh, man. That's, yeah. uh. You could buy a season cow, though. Um, that's had a few calves before, and you'll have less trouble with her. She'll know what to do. Yeah. Do you want to do that? I, I prefer doing that if I were to. Um, especially if you're buying a heritage breed, it's probably yeah. easier to find. I'm going to spend about, that's like a thousand, a couple of thousand. Um, let me look. If we had some friends that had them, we could get them cheaper, but um, right. I've got a friend in Texas who's got a heritage super rare breed that he bred over the last few years. To oh, really? First one acre cow, he claims. Oh, really? Uh, that's really? him, yeah. So that's Dan Schoenberg, actually. Uh, i got to ask him if he's got any spare ones. Yeah. He's got, like, a, a stock of, flock of, like, I think four, four adults and, like, in a bull. A good bull, I guess. Uh, so, I found Highland cattle. Um, the price is about... It, it says a range from nine twenty five to two thousand. For a baby. For cows age four to thirteen years old, and it says not all cows are bred. Average price sixteen hundred dollars. Okay. Uh, That's steep. That's expensive. Yeah. Do you see any? Uh, can you uh, get revenue from that if you're a breeder? Like, can you? Would you consider getting revenue from? Breeding? Are you talking about a seed stock thing where you're having babies just so that you can spread the genetics for other people to buy the babies? Yeah. Um. Is that uh, is that doable for for? for I don't think it's doable for space that you have. Um, I think it is doable if you have a bull and you could sell as semen, but those bulls are so expensive that the first then. Um, they're not really practical monetarily unless you're a dedicated breeder and you just happen to have this bull with amazing genetics. Um, what kind of planning would you, like if you talk about rare breed conservancy work, um, what kind of time scale are you interested in thinking about at this time? Time scale? As in like, okay, how long so long investment? That's um, not an investment. How, how would you, like, well, I mean, so you want to stay for, for, I mean, right now, what's your, what's your feeling and how long you, you, you can stay? Because it's like, okay, so there's a continuity issue if you, if, uh, if I plan projects that take three years to complete and I leave after a year, it doesn't make sense. Right. So you, yeah. That kind um, of I, I could say definitely for six months to a year. Um, beyond that, it becomes a lot more unsure for me because oh. I've just been living very quickly. Um, what? I've been, I've been changing locations rather quickly in the past three years and I haven't predicted any of those changes. So safest for me is to say six months to a year. Um, in which case it wouldn't exactly be practical to have genetics being the revenue source no, but, yeah. unless you had an extremely rare breed and then you just had um a cow have a bull calf and then you raise up the bull calf and then you could sell its semen um i could see that working in a year but at the same time it would be after a year that it starts making revenue oh actually more than that two years because then the bull would have to mature mm -hmm. Yeah, but in terms of, I'm saying, not, not for revenue sakes, but just far as, like, more more general, mm -hmm. just continuity. Like, for example, if you leave and we have nobody qualified to do that, I mean, what do we do? We just quit that part, or, or we really need to find somebody else, or you know, that kind of stuff? Like, how do we address those continuity issues? How should we think about it? Aaron, what do you think about that? I don't think it's going to be an issue, because if you if you properly plan this, we're gonna, our profile is only gonna grow, and so we're gonna have a wider net to cast around the, the recruiting pool. I think yeah. if you end up leaving, we'll be, we'll be in a good position as time goes on to get somebody to follow up with your skill set. I okay. think we can, we, can, we can anticipate that. Mm -hmm. 
And I also think if you have a cow, um, just for dairy purposes, and you happen to have a heritage breed that's rare and you want to save the bull calf for semen or breeding or anything you want later, um, if you're expanding also to goats, goats are a lot more short-term. They only take five months to have a full pregnancy go through. Um, so that'll be a little bit more quick. I yeah. think in, in my span of time being there, um, I can do a lot and have a cow, have a baby, have dairy from that cow. And if the baby is a heifer calf, you can keep her to breed her to something else. Or if it's a bull calf, you can make those decisions um, when they when they happen. Um, you might want to eat the, the baby or, yeah, if it's a steer, you might want to keep it just for grazing purposes. Um, so it's up to up to us and... I think first thing though, we need a well because we need water. And then we need one cow or two cows. And I think from there we can plan for goats. Um, but first we need the fencing. And I think it'll all happen in its own time. And we can go at the pace of the animals. And I'll look more into Highlander prices because that was just the first website I found. And I bet we could find something cheaper. And more practical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see if you can find anything <clears throat> closer to this area here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you interested in? Um, I'm not sure if there's. I'm sure there's heritage goat breeds. Yeah. Oh, that's heritage goat breeds. Yeah. Did you guys have Lamanches before? We had one. Did you have? We had one. Uh huh. And but she. She had basically one, one teeth only, because the other one totally unused. So she wasn't really good for milk at that point. Well, I mean, she didn't basically like half. So, half the milk. But, um, yeah. So, hmm. Does somebody, <clears throat> does somebody have, like, wind blowing in the background? So the guy who, who gave us that one, probably contact him again to, to discuss, because he's actually does a lot of rare breed conservancy kind of stuff. Hey, Martin. Martin. Say what? Do you know his name? Hey, wait. Yeah. Hey, guys, so, can you hold on a second? Yeah. He's down by south of Kansas City. So, Phil Moore, he does the American Livestock Conservancy kind of stuff. But... That's yeah. We gotta map this all out and put it on a map. And uh, can we maybe? Yeah. So there's a lot to talk about there. I mean, if, if we want to do that, then then do a little research, get you get you contacting all these people, and um, kind of propose the best read. There's a few contacts we have. So there's Dan and there's there's Phil. At least two people. There's some people close by here that can contact regarding um, they have jerseys. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, there's actually a Jersey, an organic Jersey dairy. Yeah, totally. We could um, just regular Jerseys. They make the best milk. It's, or they make the best cheese. Oh, yeah. We, should, we, could, we could score on that. There's a guy about 15 miles or 20 miles who does that, actually. That would be something to... And they're consider. relatively small. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I can write up a timeline for the the life cycles of the animals that we want to have, and maybe just make a list of different priorities that we need mm -hmm. in the correct order that we need them. Okay. Yeah. So, can we open up a Google Doc? Let's do a food plan Google Doc. Do we have one like that? Food plan? No. Gabrielle work on it's called the food plan. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's go in there. Are you? Can you go in there? Yeah, I'm doing it right now. Aaron, do you know that one? The food plan? Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Oh, there it is. Okay. So. Yeah. So you're on it. So let's talk about like absolutes. Like so absolutes. Uh, can you see it? Yeah. Okay, what are some of the absolutes that we talked about? So we're gonna have a cow. 
No, it's cow is not absolute, but but strong. Let's see, strong priorities. So let's start filling the absolutes. Beans. Beans. Sweet, pot- uh, sweet potatoes. I would say corn. Do you want to plant more? More of those? We got two hundred. But you'll see it. I mean, it might. I don't know if it's gonna. I mean, we're gonna see how it takes in the rain because we. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it's in its soil, which is. I mean, it's all clay and pretty hard. I mean, you can assess it, but it's like. I'm hoping we could get a huge crop out of that, but can't guarantee it. So maybe maybe plant more, like more sweet potatoes, because um, this guy here told me you can do it all the way through June. Oh great! Uh, he's a USDA guy. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about resources. Let's let's name our resources. So there's Fillmore. So he's actually an awesome guy. He's, oh man. Um, yeah, I mean, this is stuff that basically I'm excited. I'm totally excited about all this stuff, but we neglected it totally. We just started cutting metal for the last two years. That went out the way. That's usually how farms go. Yeah. The long term exactly. plans and then the short term priorities. Mm hmm. You're saying the metal is long term and this is now resurfacing? Well, the. No, metal is long term. Yeah, yeah, that's long term. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, that's. Man, who's signing? you signing this Joseph Dillon? What are you doing, man? <laughs> Aaron? Yeah, I've got my Firefox signed in associated with that account, and then I, when I use Chrome, it's Aaron Macrook, so that I can okay. upload so, videos. So that guy, NRCS, or that guy is, that's Tim? Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's, mm-hmm. it's USDA, I think, USDA. Yeah, this is something different. Okay, okay. So Tim, USDA, he, he's the guy. VA, sweet potatoes. There's Phil Moore. He's in, in the Missouri Nut Growers Association. And he's every conservancy. Man, it's, his place has got all these nuts and he can totally survive on it. So awesome. here, hazelnuts and chestnuts are, if we can get those growing like crazy, that's yeah. the replacement of soybean and corn. Yeah, I actually just read that. Um, Is there another uh, one? Right the north of the property? What about it? I was thinking if you were going to graze the north of your property and fence it off, um, you would probably need some shade, and I was thinking trees would be the perfect thing to plant. Sure. There's a few, few uh, hickories, not no hickories, but pecans, but they take long. They're, they're like so small right now. Mm-hmm. But, uh, it's the soil. It's going on down so fast. Um, so there's that. There's... Uh, the dead of our bakery people. Gabrielle, are you outside? Uh, close by. There's the Jersey Dairy. The Jersey Organic Dairy. Hey, Gabrielle. It's not, it's not certified organic, but he doesn't need to. Gabrielle. That's great. Hey, guys. Uh, yeah. Gabrielle, are you outside? Yeah. Gabrielle, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Barely. Are you outside? I'm hearing a noise. Can I maybe like, can you call me back? Can I hang up? Can you just... It seems to be getting better. It, it gets better when you talk, Gabrielle. If you don't talk for a while, oh. it like, okay. it gets this weird humming or something. I don't know. It's atmospheric, I think. Okay. All right. I'm on the iPhone. Can you call back on, on call me back on Skype again? Yeah. sweet potato. So, Gabrielle, do you think we should do more sweet potato? We we got 200 planted? Yeah, there's space. Um Definitely. Just more add sweet more rows, I guess. Okay, so let's actually get the 
number from Tim. So follow up with Tim on the source. He he got them for like twenty cents a slip from a Georgia nursery, and they're really good. He he says, and he's gonna be coming every Thursday actually. So mm -hmm. that's cool. Um, is he gonna be working only with the sweet potatoes or on other projects? Oh, anything, anything. Like next week, he was gonna start organizing the orchard, like weed whacking under the trees. Great. And stuff. Uh huh. Um, okay, what are some other absolutes? Um, tomato, we kind of, unless we get some starts from somebody, but that's kind of late. Um, Melrose. Okay, okra, if there's enough time. Yeah. Okay, what about, uh, so, uh, all your veg, like, uh, what about, like, There might still be time to plant um, long day onions. Okay, but those things here you do like super early in the season. I, I oh. don't know what you're talking about with that. I think that's not here like that. Here you got to do it like as soon as it, um, as soon as it, it's like past freezing. Mm. Yeah, I don't, I don't. That's the only way I've seen it. I mean, I, not that I've tried it, but I. That's the only way I've seen it done right. here. So there's a guy, there's a guy next door, um, there's a neighbor who does a garden, uh, Walt, and he, he brings a bunch of stuff, but his, he planted his onions like a long time ago. Mm, okay. How about, okay. um, melons? Okay, melons. But now we're talking about like 90 day, no more. Hmm. Let's see, so June 15, July 15, August 15, September. Yeah, 90 days, no more. Uh, so three months takes us to October 15, the frost day, right? So June, yeah. right? June 15 to July. No, that's four months. We still have a 20, 120, don't we? June 15. 30, 60. Yeah, till October 15, there's still 120 days. Cool. So, okay. Okay, what about other fowl? Fowl? Yeah. As in quail? Or? So, so animals. Wait. So, what about more chickens? Can you, do you think we can still hatch more chickens? Mm. Uh, they're going to be, yeah, let's see. Yeah, have a rooster. Uh, they're going to accept ours. For that, we'd have to secure eggs from somebody else. Okay. So, so for them that. At the farm? Say what? Do you incubate them where you're at? Yeah, but we only have like a 42 egg incubator. Okay. Just a little one. Uh, is that worth it? Or? Yeah, certainly. Okay. Do you, have, you said you had 20 chickens? How many? Yeah, we've got like 15, but they're like right now, they're almost stop, stopping to lay. I mean, we don't feed them, we just free range them, but they're really, they kind of lay off in the summer and then start laying again. Okay. I think it would definitely be worth it to just get a few more. Yeah. Yeah, so Kansas City Food Circle has a basically a local grower's guide. Yeah, producer's directory. Yeah. 2012 directory. Yeah, there's a ton of them. We should basically study this as much as we can, map them out and see who we could visit and learn from. There's a whole, there's like 12 pages of, let's see, 20, yeah, about 17, 
17 pages of each one has like 10. Cool. 10 or so. so we got let's look at who who we can learn from. Basically, I mean, I see this as as we got to integrate, you know, because there's so much possibility and you got to it's really a, I mean, it's a total art. If you got the good stuff, it's like a, if you get, you've got good stock and good ideas. I mean, you can go so incredible. Uh -huh. So it's good. Okay, so chickens. Okay, what about a piglet? Do you want to do a piglet? I could, yeah. <laughs> um, but that's hard on the fencing too. But that's a small area, right? If yeah, it is a small area. Um, they they eat pretty much food scraps and they can forage a lot. Um, I don't know how much Skin area fish. a hog really needs. How much what? How much area a hog would need. Um, Did you ever uh, work with them? or? I've never had them myself. Um, I've worked with them, but only in passing. Yeah, maybe. No, nah, that's kind of pretty ambitious. That's like serious fancy it work. And, no, maybe cross that off. For, <laughs> that's chickens, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so melons. Okay, what about root? root crops like uh carrots right i mean definitely right. carrots. carrots do you know how to do carrots yeah um so how do you start them we transplant them here from you transplant them? we, we oh. grow them from seed and then protect them and then plant them when they're maybe six weeks old holy cow what i did here it works uh what just put Put a board down because it's going to be it's exposed soil. Get it nice, nicely tilled. Put a board or cover it with carpet or something or some mulch, some solid mulch, like even like OSB or like plywood or something. Mm -hmm. Long rows and then they start underneath. Otherwise, they're going to dry out. But you can get them totally nice. They're all squished underneath. You you take it off and you'll see your your line of them. And there'll be a few other weeds, but you take get rid of those. But but that works really well. That's uh, cool. I've seen, I've heard of that. That's how I've done it all the time, and it mm -hmm. it's good. It works well. You can get them started outside that way. Okay, what about a beets? Enough time for that still? I mean, that sounds like carrots and parsnips, if possible. No, but parsnips take longer. How about um, turnip? Turnip, yeah. So turnip, radish. Okay, okay, then uh, greens. Like, there's going to be a bunch of greens we could do, like lettuce. Lettuce. Right? Uh, you can do all kinds of different ones, like romaine and butter. chard. Yeah, chard definitely. Chard would do well. How There's does kale grow out there? Kale, kale grows pretty well here, so it's yeah, I. It's a staple for me. Um, I just don't know if it would grow well there. Find out, but it's like here. It's it's really you got to start pretty early. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks um, like April, May, or August, September, October. Huh. Okay, so, okay, maybe let's kale for winter. Yeah. You looking for Missouri, Aaron? I'm looking at zone 5 vegetable planting calendar. Yeah, and then at that time, it's like, that's going to be, I mean, it gets cold, it can get so cold so quick here, but, yeah. Okay, what about greenhouse? Do you want to get that thing going again? Yeah. I have a greenhouse. Uh, uh, what do we do there? I mean, because right now it's hot. Mm -hmm. Um would we do anything in the summer? We could do basil. Basil would work well, yeah. Um, that grows well. Basil, totally, yeah. Um, I wonder if peas would work. No, no, peas are like first thing okay. in the spring. Yeah. Um. Um, so do you think beets would work? But they take a long time, right? I think beets would be better for the winter. Okay. For winter. Just like turnip for winter. I mean, all of that basically fall crop. I mean, you mean fall yeah. crop? Yeah. Fall, fall plant. But carrots might be, that's like summer. That's like all throughout, right? As long as you can keep them moist and keep them, get them sprouted. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Greens, lettuce, uh, spinach, but spinach will be later. I mean, I wouldn't, can't see it spreading. 
Well, you no, can eat so. um, sweet potato greens. Uh huh. Sweet potato greens aren't they like yep. pretty bad? Uh, pretty... that's the ones I've had. Uh, like really I've young just, ones. I've just cooked them. Yeah, pick them like not when they're super giant. Um, but I just kind of steam them or saute them, and they kind of break down like spinach, and they're not really bitter if you get them young. Okay. Uh, how about some shell beans? Like, um, uh, what would you recommend? So you said things like lima and other ones, but I'm not sure about Baba that. Beans. You could have um, uh, pork guy peas. Okay, but what about harvesting? So it's little crop that I mean, right. you're gonna have the energy to harvest that kind of stuff. I think small. it's gonna have to be hand harvested. Um, how are the ergonomics of that? Is that Effective Sorry. enough? To, is that effective enough to feed any people, or that's like it's going to take up too much time? Papa beans are pretty big in comparison to Papa other beans, big. um, so that just has the sheer quantity of scale. Um, but anything smaller than that, it's not going to be a huge harvest for so many people. Yeah, I mean, you can't call. It, I mean, the green beans could be a staple-like thing. Right. It can and a bunch it'd be of. And really that. productive if you get a good variety. Man, if we if we could do, like, um, so melons, squash. If we could, like, sweet. Ever hear of sweet mama squash? No, I've never heard of that one. What are they like? It's like a Hubbard, but it's sweet. Ooh. That's like the best. So if we could beef up on that. Mm -hmm. So beef up on a squash. There's the sweet potato. That would be like a real staple. Green beans, corn could be pretty staple. Shell beans, I mean, I don't know. Okra tomatoes and peppers. Peppers were kind of, I don't know. That's, it's like I would question that really. Um, I mean, it's late, way late here for that. Um, melons could do, I can imagine some watermelons and other things. But we had like bad squash bugs here. Oh, really? Oh yeah, I mean I think it's the just the lack of health in the soil. I think it's just a bad soil ecology. But we got like s totally wrecked. We grew all these watermelons like the second year or first year, and they got totally wrecked. We we caught a harvest of them, but they were like barely ripe. Oh. We didn't get a bunch of them, but yeah, they got totally decimated. Um, I have hope in carrots as a staple. Yeah beets possibly parsnips if we can get if enough season turnip yeah we could turnip and i mean those types of root crops yeah we could i mean imagine having that um that would be like a super low-key you know like plebeian food <laughs> <That'd be awesome. laughs> you could round it out with hopefully some dairy yeah, if we had some turnip and chicken in the middle of winter. I mean, think about this. Chicken, milk, sweet potato, green bean in the winter, squash. Yeah. You know, that could be pretty good. Pretty, Plus, uh, if you uh, dry some fruit from the summer. Yeah. Yeah, if we... Depending on how much we get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, chickens are pretty absolute. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, from... So look at the food circle, food circle people. Let's find something there. Can you maybe like start looking for that? Do you have any time to look for that? Cause that's something we, if we come here, like let's hit the ground running or like we can even get it before you, well not before you come out. I'm gonna be away for the next week. Um, but yeah, it'll be good to, to find to find a good source, a reliable source. We could get like 42 at one time. Okay. Um, and uh, do that. Get some eggs. What about any grains? Any fall grains like winter wheat? Yeah, winter wheat. That's winter coming around the corner. That's like October. Yeah. If we did wheat, we we would want. But that for that we need a combine or hire somebody. Uh, so animals. So, so cow is a good. So there's hope. There's a lot of hope in a cow, which gets us the dairy. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So depending that depends on water. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's about it. So, ch but the chickens can take us a long way in the cow. Mm -hmm. Okay. When do you think you would dig a well? Well, so I called up this guy, and I, I'm going to follow up, but if we do that, it will be within the next month. Okay. I mean, we have to do that because we're going to get killed yeah, if we have water here with people. Yeah. With people coming. Yeah. All right. Um, what else? You talked about rice, but I mean, I have never heard of anybody doing rice in this state. Yeah, I actually right. looked up the map, and it's just the very south southeast corner, like on the opposite side of the state that people have grown rice. Yeah, I was mm -hmm. just trying to think of something that works with floodplains or just temporary flooding. Um, mm -hmm. um, do you guys have any berries there? We had a whole bunch of, okay, so we have some aronia, some mm -hmm. aronia viking. We've got some nanking cherry, uh, just they're young, but we have a whole bunch of bunch of raspberries but they may they're there but they're so weeded out that right now we're lucky if we're gonna get any crop mm -hmm. but they produced a lot like last year they did a little the year before a lot but they started started getting weeded out just a lot of weed pressure yeah so uh, we've got some grapes but still those need to be taken care of they're getting weeded out on their trellises it's pretty wild here it's like a pretty grassed out in the whole orchard area and all that. But it's got a lot of, I mean, it's what's cool actually is that there's so much planted, so if it gets cleaned up, we're in like decent shape. Mm -hmm. Actually. Mm -hmm. That's that stuff I like to do, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So greens we could definitely do, uh, would, that, would that be outside? Yeah, right? Um, yeah, unless you wanted to put them in the greenhouse the whole season. But. I, I think definitely the chard should be outside. Um, chard, yeah, chard should, should might be able to do that still. Um, what about some other? Oh, like man, if we could get cilantro, mm, that'd be good. Yeah, oh, that'd be good. Like, dip. Mm -hmm. Say dill again. Or dill or fennel. Dill, mm -hmm. dill and cilantro. Are, I think those would pretty much succeed here. Yep, those would. Oh, radish. Radish, radish definitely yeah. can succeed here. I I think the the brassica crops don't do well here because of the bugs. So it's like, yeah, that organic. Is it aphids? Is it other stuff? No, it'll be like uh, so the kind of so for cabbage, it's the cabbage moths or loopers or whatever. For the brassicas, I don't know. What are those things? The worms. Those worms. What are those? Get wormy. They get worms on them. I forget. I, yeah, I know I that whenever we tried here, it's like, oh, it's hard. But we can learn from uh, the next door neighbors here how, because he does, he does uh, cabbage, but then again, he's not organic. So hmm. it's like I don't know how to do it. Well, maybe organic. there's there's a strategy for some preventative. Oh, there's a, that's yeah, there's a strategy for everything. The question is, yeah. can we figure it out and I think the main the main hindrance is the quality of the soil ecology. I think that's number one. Once we get that worked out, um, we're going to be in much better shape. It's good that we're getting Mexicans. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. So maybe look into this kind of a plan and see if you could get any more specific on this. And for the cow, like find out the fencing and prices, chicken yeah. sorts. Um, Find uh, culture plan. Uh, find uh, management plan. Needed. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. But that. And that all grows here. That grows well. And then the longer term stuff like like hazelnuts, chestnuts, acorns, all kinds of nuts, black walnuts. Black walnuts we can freestyle here. Oh, Great. we can catch a lot of that. That that would actually be a major nut crop that we can catch all yeah. over the place. 
yeah, that's actually pretty good. Just go on the roads and pick them. Just get the fallen ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, what about mushrooms? Did you ever do any mushrooms? Um, I've done a little bit. Some oysters, think, some shiitake, some... Um... What do you think about a mushroom house? Should we build That's one? That's a good idea. Mushroom celery. Um, it can be it can be like a root cellar mushroom growing vibration oh, yeah. in one. Ooh, um, ooh. ooh that's, that's a good one. Okay. Yeah, I've been like... I've been wanting to do that for a long time. My okay. computer's gonna run out of battery in maybe nine minutes. Okay, so let's quit by then. Okay, so um, root cellar slash shroom house. Yeah. Yeah, that would be awesome, right? And yeah, yeah, yeah. And if we can start growing our own spawn and, and self-propagating it, that would be awesome. Yeah, I mean, I can see what grows wild there and maybe get the spores, start um, inoculating some logs and get that started right away. That's really easy. How about the simple champignons? Is that mm -hmm. good too or no? Yeah, those, those grow really fast. Let's let's do that. Like that's like what? Like in compost essentially? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If we could get the mycelium across this land, that would be good. <laughs> yeah. You know you know this thing about how you know like false statements? Mycelium running. Oh well, yeah, like that stuff about that's what holds the soil in place. Like if there's yeah. huge erosion on in logging roads, the shrooms yeah. will take care of that if if they got their mycelium going on. It's so important. Okay. okay. So that's about, yeah, so see, um, what else? Anything else? Yeah, I've got so, uh, Jonathan Yelnick. He, he agreed to take a look at that soil report and meet with us. So, Gabrielle, do you want to meet with him this week? Yeah. Um, he's a really good friend of mine. He's a really great guy. He runs a 40-acre farm in Denver, and he's got a master's in um, soil science. He's, he'd be an awesome resource, and he said that he would come with me to factory farm um, when you're getting going, we could just sit down and just be there for the first week or whatever. I mean, it's up to marching, but, um, so l I'll get back to you, um, and we'll try and schedule a meeting this week. Sounds great. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it's about it. So I don't know if you can prepare any, you know, get like seed sources and things like that, just mm -hmm. budget and let's start buying stuff and seeds. And I mean, you have to kind of. Like we don't have even a tiller, but 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 what's what's his name? So we've got um, Tim had a so tiller. Say what? Great. Did Tim have a tiller? Yeah, yeah, he he has one. Uh, he could run, but but we're gonna build one. Uh, so Graham is coming, so we're gonna do that. I mean, in the meantime, we could even consider buying one, but it's like. Or renting one from Walt or something, but we don't have one right now, so that's we can get on building one really quickly. Um, or we can. Let's see. You have to kind of consider like all the tools, so make sure like drop all the tools. Make sure uh, you've got a t full tool list, and we'll check off the ones we have. But. That's a thing to consider, like um, draw up a tool list of stuff, materials list, like if we do the, the fencing, like all, so prepare all of that, like basically bill of materials that we got to buy, all the materials, yeah. So let's get some numbers and see what's really practical to get down to. But I mean, I think we'll, I guess, probably finalize a lot of that once you see the place and see what it's really like. Um, but probably like a lot of the seed stuff, I mean, we probably got to get that beforehand. Right. It's time okay. sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll get running with that. Okay. Sounds good. And and find out. Let's see. So about the. Let's see. So for the cows. We got what we got to do on that is so talk to. Jersey people down here. Dan Schoenberg. And then uh, fill more. Yeah. Yeah, things like that. Okay. 
and look at the start mapping out the, our friends in the Kansas City food circle. That would be, I mean, I would say that's the number one resource as in if you can talk to people to find out what works, because you can be planting all kinds of stuff and you can see none of it grows. Yeah. But if you plant the right kind, it is going to grow. It's, it's very, it's so sensitive. So, you, so I mean, that, that's, we got to do that. Okay. Um, and yes, starting with, I mean, we know that sweet potatoes are awesome and things like that. The green beans are going to do good. But even for all those, it's like, which ones? I think there's ones that work better than others, definitely. Yeah. So, okay. Um, yeah. So that sounds good. So that's about all. That's about all okay. for now, then, yeah? I'll sign you thing I work on in the next couple of days. Mm-hmm. Okay. That sounds good. Sounds good. All right, so let's talk. Let's uh, keep in touch then. I'll be away for next week from uh, Saturday to Monday, though. But yeah, before Saturday is good. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Aaron, okay. just let me know when that meeting is. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Okay, so good to talk to you, and yeah. we'll be in touch then. Sounds good. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.